Hello, I'm Ken Johnson, and welcome to the New Hope Reads Ministry. We hope you will visit daily as we read from the Chronological Bible. May our time spent together in God's Word be a blessing to us all as God reveals Himself and His nature, as He opens our minds, and as He prepares our hearts for our good and His service. Again, thank you for joining us. December 10th, Paul wrote this letter to Philemon while imprisoned in Rome. Paul sent the letter with Onesimus, who traveled with Tychicus to Colossae. See Colossians 4, 7 through 9. Greetings from Paul, Philemon 1, 1 through 3, about A.D. 58 to 60. This letter is from Paul, a prisoner for preaching the good news about Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. I am writing to Philemon, our beloved co-worker, and to our sister Appia, and to our fellow soldier Archippus, and to the church that meets in your house. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Paul's Thanksgiving and Prayer, Philemon 1, 4 through 7. I always thank my God when I pray for you, Philemon, because I keep hearing about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. And I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. Your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother, for your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. Paul's Appeal for Onesimus Philemon 1, 8-22. That is why I'm boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it in the name of Christ because it is the right thing for you to do. But because of our love, I prefer simply to ask you. Consider this as a request from me, Paul, an old man, and now a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus. I appeal to you to show kindness to my child, Onesimus. I became his father in the faith while here in prison. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past, but now he's very useful to both of us. I am sending him back to you, and with him comes my own heart. I wanted to keep him here with me while I am in these chains for preaching the good news, and he would have helped me on your behalf. But I didn't want to do anything without your consent. I wanted you to help because you were willing not because you were forced. It seems you lost Onesimus for a little while so that you might could have him back forever. He is no longer like a slave to you. He is more than a slave, for he is a beloved brother, especially to me. Now he will mean much more to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. And I won't mention that you owe me your very soul. Yes, my brother, please do me this favor for the Lord's sake. Give me this encouragement in Christ. I am confident as I write this letter that you will do what I ask and even more. One more thing, please prepare a guest room for me. For I am hoping that God will answer your prayers and let me return to you soon. Paul's final greetings, Philemon 1, 23 to 25. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. So to Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my co-workers. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Paul wrote his letter to the Philippians, from Rome later in his imprisonment there. Greetings from Paul. Philippians 1, 1 and 2, about A.D. 59 to 61. This letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus. 
I am writing to all of God's holy people in Philippi who belong to Christ Jesus, including the church's leaders and deacons. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Paul's Thanksgiving and Prayer, Philippians 1, 3 through 11. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So it is right that I should feel and do as, as I do about all of you. For you have a special place in my heart. You share with me the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. God knows how much I love you, and I long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. Paul's joy that Christ is preached. Philippians 1, 12 through 19. And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. It's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know that I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives if they preach, as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that as you pray for me and the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, I would, this will lead to my deliverance. Paul's life for Christ. Philippians 1, 20 through 26. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. But if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live. Knowing this, I'm convinced that I will remain alive so I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith. And when I come to you again, you will have even more reason to take pride in Christ Jesus because of what he is doing through me. Live as citizens of heaven, Philippians 1, 27 to 30. Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. Then, whether I come and see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. Don't be intimidated in any way by your enemies. This will be a sign to them that they're going to be destroyed, but that you're going to be saved, even by God himself. For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. We are in this struggle together, You've seen my struggle in the past, and you know that I am still in the midst of it. Unity through humility. Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, 
and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Christ's humility and exaltation, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hi there, and welcome to New Hope Reads. I'm Mark Roof, and we are delighted that you've joined us to share in the reading of God's Word. It's very important that we share this together and be in God's Word daily. And by the way, we'd like to invite you to join us here at New Hope Church of Christ anytime you get a chance. Sunday mornings, we have classes at 9.30, we have worship at 10.30, and you can join us live or online. Have a blessed day.